so this happened when I was in uh, uni. So we were doing project works and stuff like that. And uh, there was, I think, five of us in a group, uh, including my friend, the Malay lady, the Malay girl. And there was this one day that we were just doing project work and uh, her house was nearby and we got hungry. So she said, hey, no worries about that. So she got home and she said, hey, got, got somebody else, you want to come or not? You want to come and eat? So we're like, okay, la, why not? You know, somebody else who doesn't like somebody else. So we just packed and, and we went and we went. And we've never been to a house before because... I think, you know, at that age, you don't just go to people's house. Not like primary or secondary school, you do project work and you appear, right? So when we, we reached her house, it was a very nice place, you know, very well kept and all that, you know. And, and a lady greeted us uh, at the door. So this lady, um, she's not pretty, you know, Eugene, but she has a soft face, like very clean, you know, very clean, the mule look. So I assume we all thought that was the mum, obviously. Yeah, so she served us. And uh, we ate, but the boys, right, the guys, right, they were just like flirting with her. They were like, like, like smiling, smiling, ti ti. Cheese fry, ah. Then eat, then cheese, cheese. So I felt like that was a bit like, wow, oh, too much, ah. I say, so when they were in the kitchen, I actually scolded the guys. I said, you all. You are very retarded, you know. You are you cheat, cheat, smile, smile here. So embarrassing, lah. Like. I say, I am a woman. You can stop that or not? So I'm like the caca of the group. Right? They're all scared of me. Then she's like, Ah, no lah, no lah, nothing lah, nothing. The food nice, the food nice. But I tasted like water. I legitly thought my mom could cook better than this. So I said, Okay, lah, okay. Eat, eat, finish, finish, finish. Then, uh, then she asks us uh, where where we are going after this. Then we say we are wrapping up stuff and all that. We we did a bit of discussion, and then we want to finish lah. We went down. So my friend actually send us out lah. It's, I think it's customary for Malays to just send the door out, out. So outside, she start giggling. She start laughing really. And she say, hey, you all are throat, you know. I say, you oh, throat. Ah, cheek here, cheek there. That one, you know who not? Then we're like, your, your mother lah, right? No, that's my grandma. My mother work. Then like... Is there anyone here? What did you find? You are listening to Supernatural Confessions. Your grandma? So I was like, your grandma, you sure not? So the guys were like, what the F, you know, your grandma? I said, yeah, yeah, my grandma. They were like, how's your grandma? Uh, about 67, 68. But she looked nothing like that, like Eugene. She looked like me, you know, like like our, you know, there's a difference here when you're 60 plus. I, I don't know, maybe good genes lah. So we were like, oh, so okay. So do, do you have uh, the Machi's number? I, I would like to call her, just for research purposes, of course, you know, asking for a friend. What are you looking at? Hey, Machi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was that was a bit weird because, but we left it at that because she said good genes. Yeah, and then of course you know first year freshman year, and then after that we got busy with stuff, and then uh, coincidentally the last year I think I got paired up with her for a discussion, and uh, since she was near, she said, "Hey, Ri, I want to visit my grandma again." So I thought it's Asam Pedas again because I remembered. So I was like. Uh, asam pedas you remember la. it for the food lah. Yeah, I remember it for the food lah. I mean, I don't want to be rude, right? So I just like, oh, asam pedas again lah. The guy's not with us lah. I said. Then he's like, actually no lah. My grandma is quite sickly. He said, you know, quite, quite sickly. Then I'm like, sickly? But she looks so fit. You know, she looks so perfect that day. Then she didn't want to talk much. Yeah. Uh, she's one actually, she's one of my closer friends lah. We, we do share a bit. So I just follow her home, you know. Uh, but the house that once had a very nice aura, very bright, you know suddenly became very dark and the thing is when you open the walk through the gate right the fishy smell just go right through your nose right up your nose yeah it makes you want to vomit you know yeah just super fishy like a like very dropping fish and all that but of course you being you you don't say anything right i mean you're in someone's house man. so you just shut up and then you just like uh i was like where, where's your grandma? I want to salam her lah. Then she said, uh, no need, no need. Uh, you just wait for a bit. But I can't be just like in the hall doing nothing, right? So I followed her to the door. And, and when she went in, right, I thought we were looking at a different person because there the lady was. I don't, I don't even think it's the same lady because she looked very different now. You know, she had boils on her skin all the way until her neck. And I'm someone who see things like that, I will vomit, you know. So I was like, I saw it and I'm like, okay. Then I, I don't know where to look already. Yeah, and then she, she kneeled down beside the grandma bit and then she was talking to the grandma. So uh, she called the grandma and she called the grandma and then because the grandma spotted me already, I had to, uh, I just like, 
I could, I want to call her cheap, but now no longer cheap already. <laughs> no, really, nene lah. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, uh, uh, nene, nene, I just nod my head, but I stood there. But she really looked like damn bad. She had bald, she was balding and all that. It was, but the face was all red and it was a it was a nightmare lah. It was just a nightmare, and the stench was really overpowering, really, really overpowering. So I didn't know where to look. So I was just like waiting for her to talk, you know. So I was just like looking around, looking around. You know, when you got, you don't know where to look, right? You're just like, Sheila, what am I doing here? Let me just pass time. That's when I saw it at the corner of the cupboard. Yeah, it was just crouching there. Um, I don't think it was a ghost because I've seen ghosts before. It, it, it was just crouching there. I just could make out red eyes, but really long nails and just staring at the nanny direction. So it's not looking at me. It was just like crouching and just staring. And I was like, shit, what the hell is that? So, you know, you, your eyes caught it already, right? But that thing didn't look at you, ma. So you just like, for a split second, you're like, what the hell is that? Then my heart just dropped. So I was telling her, hey, I, 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 I went outside, I went outside. So I just, I just went out. Yeah, but it was so scary because she came out right after. And she she's had a change of mind. She said her parents are coming. So she said, hey, why not we just exit, like, go McDonald's or what? I said, I say, can I? You, you set the radio? Because there was a homeless. They engaged a homeless to take care of the grandma. Yeah, and so uh, when she went out, uh, when we went out, the we could hear the grandma, right? It was, until now, uh, Eugene, damn creepy because she was like, she was like moaning. But she was saying go in Malaysia. So she was going like, pergi, pergi. Then she was like, pergi. Oh my God, that was so freaky. My hair was standing up. <laughs> because that was the moment... She was just screaming, like, like asking the thing to go. And I could hear it. So I wanted to get out as fast as I could. So I was just like, wearing my shirt. Like, ah, let's go, let's go, let's go. Then you could see that my friend was swelling. He was, she was swelling in the eyes. And when we reached downstairs, uh, I just waited for her to, to talk. Uh, I said, I said your, your grandma has been sick for a long time already. Uh. And then she came, she just burst out crying. You know, they got void that got this, the batu seats, right? She just burst out crying. And, and and she told me that she said her grandma actually practiced this thing called the suso, where she put diamonds, real diamonds, uh, on the chin, on the eyes, and on the forehead. So at that moment, right, being 20 age, right, I was like, oh, I got such thing. Uh. Then she said, yeah, because this thing uh, allowed the grandma to, to stay young and to be a sweet talker, actually. Yeah, I, I was thinking, no wonder the boys were like, nice, nice, nice. It is not even nice. And, and it's only zooming on the guys. Yeah, yeah. So everything that the grandma wants, right? Like, like go market. She say get vegetables. She get for free. Yeah. So everything is sweet talking, But I guess uh, there was a time that she wanted to take it out already. I think I don't know. I think uh, realization or what she wanted to take it out, but she couldn't because the person that put it in passed on already. Yeah. So I I don't know how to explain so so, and I'm I'm not an expert on it, but I suppose. She would just suffer, and, and that black thing I saw was a susu thing. Lah. And I told her, and I told her she, she cried even more because she was like, Is there anything I can do? I said, I, I wouldn't know. Lah. I said, What are your parents doing? And then she said, The parents are going to call an Ustad to help. And I said, Then maybe the Ustad would know what to do. I mean, we were just 20 something, so we, we didn't know what to do. So I just listened up to her, and and we just leave it at it. And then after a few weeks, uh, the grandma did pass away. Yeah, I, I didn't ask much. I didn't ask much. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't oh. ask much. So yeah, maybe I don't need the uh, matchit's number anymore, lah. You don't need the matchit <laughs> number anymore, but it, it comes like like it kind of intrigued me because this kind of thing actually exists. Like, can you imagine how high you can go up a corporate ladder with that thing? In fact, uh, from what I understand about susuk, it's still a very common practice in today's day and age. But mm. I do hear a lot of susuk practices even locally. There are people who uh, would do all this spell for you. There's a service provided. And Susu is more of the Malay side, right? Uh, there's also mm-hmm. the, the, Thai, the Thai version where they put needles also or they have the uh, uh, special tattoo, especially mm-hmm. when girls who are working in, in the nightlife scene or the bankers. Uh, and a true story, that the ones that I, I have met, the most recent case was a high-flying uh, uh, investment banker. She's a lady. Mm-hmm. And she also have uh, Susu. Wow. Yeah. And to her, it's... It, it works. It works like a charm. So I, a lot of us believe that there's always a price to pay at the end of the road. Um, but there's also the belief that if I don't use it for certain years and I take it out after that, I should be fine. Just 
don't die with the susu in your in your, your that, skin. That's the that's thing, you see, you don't know when you're gonna die. Yeah. If you know, then at least you can like plan it out or oh, I'll take it out when I reach this age. But I think it's just something that you know you you dare take the risk. I think you have to handle it. Yeah, I I mean But also the thing, right, is if you are so successful over the years with having susu implanted in you, would you then want to remove it and go back to a life of normalcy? Right? Exactly. You wouldn't. You just, exactly. it, it's all this greed and power of maybe next year, next week, I'm going to take it out soon. Uh, yeah. uh, the next million I make should be enough. The next, if I marry this man, it should be enough. Then after you marry the man, you're afraid that you lose the man. Then, you know, this, it's, it's, a, it's a downward spiral for this. Yeah. It's, it's just a continuous desire for things, I believe. Yeah. But that is something that, that make you ponder. Because after that, I actually read up quite a bit. And I think you're right. They are practicing people who actually do this kind of susu and I think it's a very sensitive topic that's why when we wanted to open this story a lot of, I think some some were like hey it's very sensitive you know don't talk about it but I think like like what you shared with me this, these are things that need to be shared to discuss I think yeah. there's always the danger in sharing an idea because someone who doesn't know it will now know it and be intrigued to try it but in that same vein it's also very dangerous to not talk about it because if someone is contemplating doing it now mm. hearing the story it might deter the person so Knowledge is like a knife. It works both ways. It's how you're going to use the weapon for good yeah. or for evil. So I choose to be equipped with the knowledge rather than to be ignorant about it. So at least mm. I have the option of then mm. using that knowledge to my advantage or not. Oh, well said. Yeah, I, I think that's very important. No? All right. Thanks, Rina. <laughs> okay. Have fun. All right. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. What did you find? Bye. You're listening to Supernatural Confessions.